morning. And welcome to worship on this windy, windy day. You might have gotten blown in, but it's warm in here. So welcome to you all, all in person and all watching online. It's great to have you as we worship on this fourth Sunday of Easter, this Good Shepherd Sunday. We're going to hear about the Lord's care for us and also for the refugees of the world, since we're celebrating Refugee Sunday as well this morning. So again, welcome. And if you'd please stand as Sharon leads us in the Litany for Refugees. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Mighty God, as you guided the Israelites through the wilderness, be a pillar of fire by night and a pillar of cloud by day, for refugees to search the world and As you brought the Israelites out of bondage to freedom, bring refugees out of persecution to safety. As you protected the Israelites through 40 years in the desert, Wipe away their tears of sorrow. Put an end to warfare and tyranny. Open the doors of safer nations. Rebuild their lives. Restore their material goods. Revive their hope. Shine your grace upon them. Strengthen their bonds of friendship and family. And inspire your churches to welcome the stranger. And together we sing hymn number 726 in your red hymnals, Light Dawns on a Weary World.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Holy God, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters, our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both lands and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. Satisfy the world's need through this living water, where drought dies the earth, dries the earth, bring refreshment, where despair prevails, grant hope, where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Spirit reigns forever. Amen. We sing the canticle of praise on page 140 in the front of your hymnals. God be with you. Let us pray. O God, our shepherd, look with mercy upon people everywhere who live with injustice, terror, disease, and death as their constant companions. Guide us away from our complacency and help us to eliminate cruelty wherever it is found. Lead us to your vision that everyone may enjoy a fair portion of the abundance of the earth. Amen. Please be seated as we hear Annalisa Rivas lead in the stewardship sharing story. Good morning. Uh, I'm Annalisa Rivas, one of the co-chairs of the stewardship committee here, and I just wanted to share a little bit today about how I've come to understand stewardship through my life. So my first memory of understanding what stewardship meant 
had nothing to do with church. <laughs> it was on a hike with my family, and I remember being in the Slick Rock country of southern Utah. There's very few living things to be seen just by looking around. And I remember my dad having my sister and I lay down on the rock and look at the dirt. And it wasn't just dirt. It was cryptogamic soil, which is living dirt, dirt that takes thousands of years just to form a little crust on the top of life. And his point for us as little kids was not to just run everywhere and step all over the dirt because the dirt itself was alive. And he tied this for us to stewardship, saying it is our responsibility to be stewards of this living dirt. And then as the family on our hike, either my sister or I, well, usually me, would lead out and the whole family would try to step in the same footprints so that we could save as much as possible the life that was the dirt. And I admit, it took me many years to connect that experience with what I heard about stewardship at churches. I moved around a lot. I've been in a lot of different synods across the country, a lot of different denominations across the world. And sometimes that stewardship message didn't connect for me with what I remembered from being a kid, the hot rocks on my tummy <laughs> laying there looking at the dirt. And then finally I realized it's about relationship. It's about how you are in relationship to the world around you, the world that God made, and to all the creatures that inhabit this space. So I've come to understand that building those relationships, sometimes it means being the first person to step where you're going gently trying to save what you see before you. Sometimes it means being the last person, following in the footsteps of someone else and looking around to see how is the life that I'm walking on being preserved and lifted up by what I'm doing. Sometimes it means finding someone to walk with you, right? Being in relationship with other of God's creatures, finding chances to connect with others, finding chances to reach out and bring others into your own stewardship story. But all the time, it means being in relationship to God and being close to and connected to and giving to what he's given us. And I invite you to just embrace that idea, that generosity of looking for life, even in the dirt. Find the small things, find the large things. But I invite you into relationship, generous relationship with God, with this earth, and here at First, at First Lutheran. Thank you. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The baptized devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Word of life, word of God, word of life. The psalm will be read responsively by verse. You who live in the shelter of the Most High, 
who abide in the shadow of the Almighty. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. You will not fear the terror of the night or the arrow that flies by day. A thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the of your Because you have made the Lord your refuge, the Most High your dwelling place. A reading from the first letter of Peter. It is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten. But he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that, free from sins, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to John, the, 20, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated, and I'd like to invite the children to come on up. Good morning, guys. So we just heard about Jesus, our Good Shepherd, so I'm going to teach you the refrain to a song, and I'll sing a couple of the verses. So the refrain goes... I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. You think you guys can sing that? 
You know a couple of the verses? So let's sing the refrain and then we'll sing a couple of the verses together, okay? I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I don't want to be a Pharisee. I don't want to be a Pharisee. Cause they're not fair, you see. I don't want to be a Pharisee. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I don't want to be a Sadducee. I don't want to be a Sadducee. Cause they're so sad, you see. I don't want to be a sad, you see. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. I just want to be a sheep, ba, 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 ba. And we just want to be a sheep because God takes such good care of us. And for that we say thanks be to God and amen. Thanks for coming up, guys. This morning, as we gather for worship, we hear the witness of Scripture, reminding us through the gospel that Jesus is our good shepherd. This image of Jesus as our shepherd has been a powerful one for Christians throughout the generations, and it is still powerful for us today. As we think about how God is our shepherd this morning, I'd like to share a story with you about another shepherd, Patsy the Border Collie. Now, Patsy the Border Collie was a six-year-old Kelpie Border Collie mix from Corian, Victoria in Australia, who has become so famous that she has her own Instagram account. What made her famous, you might wonder? During the massive wildfires in Australia in 2020, you can see Patsy in the foreground and the fires in the background, and I'll have these pictures after worship, you can see them. But during these wildfires in Australia back in 2020, Patsy became a hero for helping to save a flock of sheep on her family farm from the dangerous flames. This is Patsy's story. As the fires came close to her family's farm, Patsy worked with her owner to save 900 sheep, bringing them to safety. Her owner's sister tells the story this way. For Patsy, funnily enough, the fires don't really make much of a difference. She's a border collie kelpie cross, so she is a working dog through and through. These dogs have been bred for generations to develop their ability to work with sheep and cattle on farms, and they are very intelligent and resilient animals. They love to work. It's just what they are bred to do, and they can be very focused and single-minded on the job. So when my brother needed Patsy's help to bring the sheep to safety, that's exactly what she did. She just got on with her job and did it, regardless of the conditions. Cool, calm, and collected. As her owner used a tractor equipped with a water tank to keep the flames that crept close to the property at bay, Patsy got to work. She gathered up the farm's flock of 900 sheep and led them through the smoke and ash safely to a paddock away from the fire. Working together as a team, the dynamic duo managed to save all but a handful of the animals, as well as all the buildings on the property, except for a few sheds. Indeed, as we think about God as our shepherd, the story of Patsy the Border Collie in Australia helps me think about what it means that Jesus is our shepherd. First, our reading from John's Gospel and Patsy's story remind us how much a shepherd cares for and protects the sheep. We know that in the ancient world, 
shepherds lived out in the wilderness with the herds of sheep and maybe one or two companions. Their job was to care for the sheep, to make sure the sheep were protected 24 hours a day, seven days a week, night and day. Today's gospel reading also has Jesus talking about how the sheep follow the voice of the shepherd because they know the shepherd's voice, because the shepherd has been with them and has cared for them, as Jesus says, giving life abundantly. Second, both our gospel reading and Patsy's story remind us that our shepherd is willing to sacrifice his own life for the sheep and for us. Jesus uses the image of a shepherd who is the gatekeeper, protecting the sheep with his very life. We know that in ancient times, some of the places where shepherds kept the sheep had low rock walls surrounding the areas, but no actual gates. At night, the shepherd would lie down in the opening of the pen, where there was not a rock wall, to keep the sheep in and to keep any dangers out. The shepherd was willing to sacrifice his life for his sheep, just as Jesus also has sacrificed his life for us. Together, as we gather here just three weeks after Easter, today we remember that we have a Savior in Jesus who cares for and protects his sheep, who cares for and protects you and me. We have a shepherd who is willing to lay down his life for his sheep, for you and for me, so that we may have abundant life. We have a shepherd who loves us, cares for us, and lays down his life so that you and I can live abundantly. How amazing that is. How incredible that is to be the recipient of that care, love, and sacrifice. This morning, we also celebrate Refugee Sunday. We are mindful that Jesus, our Good Shepherd, cares for all his sheep, those here in St. Peter and people all around the world. According to the UN Refugee Agency, there were 89.3 million people forcibly displaced worldwide at the end of 2021. Among those, were 27.1 million refugees, half under the age of 18. There were also 53.2 million internally displaced people, 4.6 million asylum seekers, and 4.4 million Venezuelans displaced abroad. There are also millions of stateless people who have been denied a nationality and access to basic rights such as education, health care, employment, and freedom of movement. There are diminishing prospects for refugees when it comes to hopes of any quick end to their plight. In the 1990s, on average, 1.5 million refugees were able to return home each year. Over the past decade, that number has fallen to around 385,000 meaning that growth in displacement is today far outstripping solutions. Thank God there are agencies out there that can help. Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services was founded to help resettle refugees and immigrants here in the United States. A denomination's website says this about their work. We are a church that does God's work in the world and in local communities pursuing justice, peace, and human dignity for and with all people. In partnership with Lutheran congregations and Lutheran social ministry organizations, Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services has welcomed more than 379,000 refugees to the United States since 1939, when one in six refugees were German Lutheran immigrants to this country. This ongoing partnership and work is driven by God's love for all people and a vision for congregations to be welcoming and generous centers for mission and ministry. 
The work of the ELCA through Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services includes responding to people caught in conflict and facing persecution, advocating for their needs and interests, helping people access resources for basic human needs, working with foster care programs for minors, legal assistance, developing new and innovative service programs and partnerships, and much more. And this organization is desperately needed in our world today. For over a year now, we have watched as an ongoing refugee crisis began in Europe in late February 2022, after Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine. Over 8.1 million refugees fleeing Ukraine have been recorded across Europe, while an estimated 8 million others have been displaced within the country by late May 2022. Then, just on April 15th, fighting began between Sudan's two top leading generals and has caused violence to flare up in that African nation. Over 420 people, including 264 civilians, have been killed and over 3,700 wounded in fighting between the Sudanese armed forces and the powerful paramilitary group known as Rapid Support Forces, or RSF. Thousands of diplomats have already been evacuated from that nation. So clearly, I hope just those two examples makes it clear that the work of the UN Refugee Agency and Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services are still needed in our tumultuous world. Therefore, in the week to come, as you say your daily prayers, please pray for all those fleeing war, violence, persecution, and instability. Remember that these people are God's children too. Children of God, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ laid down his life so that they and we may have life and have it abundantly. This morning, we thank God for the love that Jesus, our shepherd, has for us and for all people, no matter where they come from or what their current living status is. We also thank God for the blessing that we can continue to continue our faith walk with this shepherd who loves us, guides us, protects us, and who has already laid down his life for us and for our salvation. Amen.
to invite you to lay hands on any of the quilts nearby you. And if the ladies in Mission Quilters who made these beautiful quilts, I think I counted 34 of them in the sanctuary this morning. If you want to come up and lay your hands and blessing on these quilts, that would be wonderful at this time. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of the universe. You made the whole earth for your glory. All creation praises you. We lift our voices to join the songs of heaven and earth in thanksgiving for the many blessings you have given us. Renew in us the commitment to use our gifts in the service of others, and especially of those in need. Let us be your hands to feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, clothe the naked, comfort the weary and outcast, welcome the stranger, care for creation, and be loving neighbors to all people. Bless these quilts. May those who receive them find dignity in their use and comfort in their warmth. And may these gifts be a sign of your love to all people. To you, O God, be glory and honor through your Son, Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, in your church and in the world, now and forever. Amen. Source of life, who is known by many names, we gather with gratitude for the earth and all who journey in it. We Source of justice, who is new, known by many names, let us not swerve from the path of righteousness that leads to just and equitable relationships. Give us the will to leave behind the safety of our sanctuaries to become your living sanctuary and claim our place in the movement to transform creation. God, the Good Shepherd, who has come to dwell among us, God of justice, who crosses all boundaries, give us courage to resist, to say no to unfair labor practices, unjust laws, and policies. Rejoicing in the joy of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Savior. Amen. Congregation, please be seated as the offering is received.
Congregation, please rise. Generous God, in this meal, you offer your very self. We give thanks for the gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift it to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with the earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim. We praise your name and join their unending hymn. was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Celebrating this meal in the joy of our risen Savior, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Friends, taste and see that the Lord is good. You may be seated, and the ushers will guide you forth for communion.
Please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. And let us pray. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated for the announcements. Flowers on the altar, for, for the altar rather, this morning are given today by Dave Pearson and family in memory of Doreen Pearson. Please join us for our first forum following worship today here in the sanctuary as Mary Spear is going to lead us through our strategic plan framework for the next five years. If you're peckish and hungry, the scouts are serving a pancake breakfast down in our dining hall until noon today. Several of our members are heading to Benedictine Living Community after church today to sing some well-loved hymns for the residents over their lunch hour. Emily would love to have a few more singers, so if you'd please meet her next to the chapel right after worship for instructions, um, and she'd love to have your help. Spring outside cleanup day is on May 6th from 9 a.m. to noon. Many hands make light work. Next Sunday is Confirmation Sunday, so please join us as we celebrate our young members' spiritual journey as they affirm their faith. A reception will be held during fellowship time following worship, and all are welcome. Congratulations to Brenda McHugh, recipient of the Theodore U. Larson Award for Distinguished Service in Christian Education. The presentation will be held during worship next Sunday. Uh, we have many people to keep in prayer. We also lift up Catherine Christensen's sister-in-law, Faye Christensen, who's recovering from surgery and mourning the loss of her sister. We pray for Bill and Cheryl Kout as they mourn the loss of Bill's father, William. We pray for the family of Robert Samuelson, who died on April 22nd. His visitation will be here Friday from 4 to 7 p.m., and his funeral will be um, this coming up Saturday, May 6th at 11 a.m. We pray for all who are ill and all who mourn for family and friends who have recently died. Nancy Tim's going to be selling gift cards out in the gathering space after worship today. And then I'd like to call up Mark Sabinski for a brief announcement on the Boundary Waters canoe trip that we're going to take this summer. And I, along with Dave Rebar and Galen Bly, are planning a Boundary Waters trip and at the end of June, actually, in about two months. And we have six youth that we're going to take up with us. And one thing that comes along with planning for this trip is trying to get equipment together. And I have to just put a plea out here with all of you if there is anyone who would have certain equipment. Now, there's a list, and I'm not going to go over it all today, but one thing I want to share is a need for packs. This is my Duluth pack. Uh, we need probably close to 12 of them total for the nine of us to make it up there. That's for our supplies, our food, our cooking equipment, our tents. And uh, that's one thing that we could really be looking for. Um, but we're also going to be maybe looking, well, we're also going to be looking for, like, um, mess kits to be able to do some more cooking. Um, there might be a need for some smaller tents. And I just want to let you know that if that is something you can think about from your camping experiences that you may be willing to share with us, I will have probably a more extensive list in the heartbeat for the email this Thursday. I'll also have my contact information in there as well, if that is something you can help with. Um, this is an exciting adventure for me, as well as all of us, because this is a new adventure for several people. And um, if we can try to get some equipment together from the congregation, that just kind of helps put off some of our costs. And so I would appreciate you thinking about what you may have and be, be willing to share. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. And Sharon has a brief announcement, too, for our sending him. Up here is a basket that's full of what we call quilt kits. It's squares of fabric that have been cut the right size to make tops, like these quilts that we have here. And this basket will be sitting out in the narthex there uh, in the gathering space so that if anybody is interested in grabbing one of these kits, uh, 
to make a top. It's got all the directions here, which are very simple. Just a little straight line. <laughs> so if you would like to uh, be a part of that, you're welcome. Thank you. If you'd please rise as we sing our sending hymn in your bulletin. refuge camps waiting to go home. Accompany those in violent homes waiting for silence. Accompany us, God, through the waiting. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the risen one.